In a previous video, I showed you how you can convert an Ender 3 into a CNC machine to cut any metal you like. Sorry. ECM stands for electrochemical machining. Unlike regular CNC methods, Electrochemical machining does not use a spinning tool to physically cut away material. Instead, electrochemical machining chemically dissolves away material very slowly. This means that we can cut nearly any metal we want without ever having to apply force to it physically. Instead, we can just steer an electrode near a piece of metal, pump salt water at it, apply a voltage, and almost magically material is removed. Nearly any metal will work. This means that we can drill holes through aluminum, or punch holes through steel using a die. Gosh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's looking really good actually. Ah. Oh, there you have it, folks. Another special type of ECM is called Jet ECM. Jet ECM uses a slightly higher voltage and a very, very thin electrode to shoot salt water at a workpiece. Using Jet ECM, we can engrave images onto nearly any metal we like. In addition, we can also use it to cut out sheet metal. But today, we'll just be sticking to regular ECM. We are going to build an open source 5-axis CNC machine using 3D printed parts. And then we're going to be testing it by punching holes through 3mm thick aluminum plating. For an enclosure, I'm using an acrylic tank off Amazon. The main frame fits snugly over the top of the acrylic tank and allows us to mount all the parts we need. Everything for this project was printed on my Aligu Mars and Frozen Transform and it turned out wonderfully. What I've found is that resin machines really are much better than traditional FDM machines. They're easier to use and give better results. I really should be wearing safety equipment for this. I forgot to mention, if you're at all interested in some of the background chemistry and details of ECM, make sure to check out my earlier videos on the subject. I have two introductions that should get you through the basics. It is 3 a.m. just about, and I, I want to get these parts out, but the problem is I'm running low on resin, so uh, this, uh, this better work. I ended up spraying these M8 linear rods with dry PTFE lube, and it worked really well. If I get the opportunity, I'd like to recycle this design for a large 1 meter scar arm. After all, it's time to upgrade my FDM printer. Well, it looks like I destroyed the tripod in a um, fit of rage, so we're going to have to find another solution. Now we are talking. Made in America, baby! These are just two stainless steel linear rods that I cut down with the angle grinder, and then I epoxied them into this printed part right here. Assembly is very simple. If you've ever built any sort of 3D printer, then this is going to come very easily to you. The components are all very cheap and readily available. You can get everything off Amazon for the most part, minus the 3D printed parts. It all uses M3 bolts, M8 linear rods, you know, all the regular stuff. Here I am screwing in the coupler, making sure everything's tight and that we won't have any slippage. When we rotate the threaded rod, we get smooth motion up and down the Z-axis. The B-axis uses a pancake stepper motor, but in the future I'd like to switch this out for a simple servo. The reason being, we only need this to rotate about 180 degrees. We don't need continuous motion. Now you might be asking, how are we going to control all of this in the firmware? The answer is simple. We're going to use X, Y, and Z just the way we would use it in a 3D printer. But for the A and B axes, we're going to use them as extruders, meaning that if we want to rotate the work or the electrode, we're just going to say to extrude a certain amount. And we can control the extrusion and rotation in firmware by changing the steps per millimeter.
This is a quick rundown of how the machine operates. There are, of course, five axes. There are two stepper motors controlling the Y axis. These two stepper motors are connected together using this two to one adapter. This is the X axis. It drives the X carriage. On the X carriage is the Z axis stepper motor. The Z axis stepper motor controls, of course, the Z axis. What I've done is put a rubber tarp around this so that we can keep the salt water out if it happens to splash onto our linear motion area, into our linear motion area. On the Z axis carriage is located the B axis motor and rotor. This rotates freely. Salt water is pumped in from the top and comes out this electrode, which is coated in a little bit of heat shrink tubing to make sure that the only sectioned electrode that is free to act as an electrode is the tip. By using a combination of X, Y, Z, A, and B, we can get to any location around our part and approach it from any angle. This means that the geometries we are able to achieve is much greater than that of a conventional three axis machine. We can do lathe operations. We could punch in from the top, in from the side. The amount of operations we can do is exponentially um, greater than with a three axis machine. Three, two, and we're rolling. Starting the drilling. I just realized that I told the printer to move upwards when it should be moving downwards. So I am going to go fix that right now. Let's run this baby. So this is the result of all of our work. We've drilled a couple test holes here, and then these are some holes from the um, Ender 3 to compare it with. This is our electrode. You can see that it's wrapped in insulation so that only the tip is exposed and only it is doing the cutting. Now, you can notice that some of these holes, they vary in size, especially these holes here from the Ender. And that's because we are cutting um, at different vertical speeds. The faster you cut through, generally the smaller diameter of the hole, meaning that you can change the size of the hole you're drilling without ever having to change your tool. Over here, I've also cut in from the side. And if you look carefully, you can see that the diameter of the cut changes slightly over the course of the cut. And that's because I was doing this actually by hand and changing the speed manually uh, to see what sort of effects I could get. So in theory, you could drill into a piece of metal, slow down, sit there for a while, and create a cavity on the inside. I don't know of any other way you could do something like that. I've put the G-code on GitHub if you want to take a look at everything. But I would recommend using some Python programs I wrote a while back and maybe playing around with that if you want to create more complex geometries. For this machine to be really perfect, there are a few modifications I would make. Number one, um, the A axis is a little bit trash. Uh, the vise here is only usable with three millimeter metal, sort of tilt to it. And I think that is a result of it not being clamped perfectly onto the stepper motor shaft. 
So this whole thing, this needs to go and be, and it needs to be replaced with something much better. I already mentioned that the, the B axis could really use a servo motor. Uh, that would give us ex excellent positional control of where this was. Oh, one more thing. Uh, everybody's gonna laugh at me, but I completely forgot to put in limit switches on the Z axis, on the Y axis, or on the X axis. So that also needs to be added. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you get to designing all this and you, you focus heavily on, you know, the aesthetics or how the linear motion is going to work or how, how everything is going to be printed and then you completely forget to put a simple switch on the end here. But aside from that, I'm very happy with how this turned out. It's an excellent motion platform, not just for ECM, but really anything. I could see you sticking a pipette on this or a USB camera, an endoscope. You've noticed that I've added two little flares here on the uh, end of the Z carriage and there's, there's holes in these so that way you can mount more tools on this. So it is very versatile. Uh, I'll give it that. That should be everything. I want to say this this video is done. It is currently 1am and I want to get it out. In the future we'll, we'll have some more neat stuff to talk about. Uh, here's a little hint of something I'm doing. This is Sly Cap Elastomer PDMS and I'll be playing around with using that for 3D printing. 